Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Lord, for another time to worship at your feet. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration. Accept our sacrifice of worship to you this day in the name of Jesus. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. We've come to draw strength, we've come to draw, we've come to draw, draw, draw. Draw from you again. We've come to draw strength. We've come to draw. We've come to draw from you, Lord.
Say I'll be 
worship you. Because 
it deserves a praise. Our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. And um, on this note, I want to welcome you all to this glory of service, um, the midweek service. This is a moment where we dig deep into um, the word and we learn from his feet. So tonight, we will be um, looking at a very um, important um, topic in our Christian race. Not just in our Christian race as Christians, but in our life as human beings. Because it's one of the essence of why we are here on earth. It's one of the things that we are here to fulfill. So, in that light, um, I know that every month, you know, as, a, as the custom of this church, we, um, our father, uh, the man of God, the head shepherd of this ministry, God always gave him like a theme for the month. And this month, he gave the theme, the writer for the month was, or it still is, um, sons and daughters of God. You know, when Pastor gave that theme on uh, March 31st, on the April 1st, yeah, at some point, I was thinking in my head, how, okay, sons and daughters of God, okay, we know we are sons and daughters of God, but how can we weave this around into, you know, our usual sab, um, sermon on Sunday, how can we whip it around the midweek service? So, I was just thinking, how sons and daughters, what does it mean? It, I was struggling with it. I couldn't, I was just trying to understand the rationale or how, why God gave him that thing, sons and daughters of God. So, last week, uh, when he told me I'll be taking the midweek, I, I was just thinking, Holy Spirit, what do you want to tell, what do you want me to preach about? Because 
I was just standing there, just like, okay, sons and daughters, or maybe if something else you want me to talk about, just give it to me. So I was just praying. I was just waiting on God. And sometimes I think on Sunday, Saturday night or Sunday, the word came to me. Sunday, yeah. True identity. When the word true identity came to me, then it, I was still trying to build flesh around it. Because, okay, true identity. Then I was trying to come up with some other things around true identity. But one thing about me is that when I'm preparing for someone, I just, um, I don't, I try to, I don't, I don't like to use head knowledge. I just try to wait to listen. Like, what is it? So true knowledge came. I wrote it down. I was just walking. I was just moving on. And I wrote some other things under that um, uh, text. True identity. Then on Sunday, when pastor was doing, uh, doing the sermon, doing the sermon, doing the service, then it started getting clearer and clearer. And you know what? He said something that two Sundays in a row, God has given it, God has laid it in his heart to do a series on your identity. That was when it made more sense to me, like, wow, the spirit of God is one. So in that land, right there and then when he said it, I showed my phone to the kinesthetic because she was sitting next to me like, wow, look at my phone. Look how I just wrote down that I was going to preach about on Wednesday, which is true identity. And pastor just said it, your identity. So it now became more clearer about what God wants to talk to us about today. True identity. And I pray I, God will help me to do, um, to speak his mind on this topic, to our understanding, to truly know who we are in Christ Jesus as sons and daughters of the Most High. Hallelujah. Could you please turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. It's a popular story. We all know it. It's the story of the prodigal son. It's the story of the prodigal son. So I'll, very, uh, I'll read so that we can just have, refresh our mind about it. Then I said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided into them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted these possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Verse 15. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he, said him, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Hold it there, sir. This was a, 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 a boy that had everything. A boy that was coming from a space of surplus. A man that was coming from a space of having dominion. The father was a wealthy man. The father owns a lot of slaves, a lot of sheep, servants and everything. But this was a guy that went away with his um, um, possession and squandered it. And at some point he started eating with the swine. Not just eating with the swine, eating the food that the swine, the pigs were eating. Something changed. From a child that was the, um, the, that his father is a wealthy man to a child that is now dining with the pigs. Something changed. Something was lost. Something moved. Something shifted. And you will see that at some point, there's something that phased him out of his reality. Of who he was in his father's house. But thank God for verse 17. Something very profound happened in verse 17. But when he came to himself, something snapped him out of his uh, oblivion. Something snapped him out of his delusion. Of his, something snapped him out of his denial of his, um, of, of his, of his trends. He lost who he was. But something came and reminded him of who he was. And he said... How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. You can go back to verse, that, that verse 17. That's where I want to stay. Because that is where I'm going. How many 
of my father's servants have bread enough and to spare. But before that, he came to what? To himself. He came to the realization of who he, who he is. He came to the understanding that I am, what is happening to me? I am eating with the pigs. I am even eating the food that belongs to the pigs. No, this is not me. No. This is not who my father desired me to be. This is not who my father sent, it, sent me how to be. I came to this place with surplus. What is what has happened to me? Why have I lost it? Why am I living the life of a commoner when I am actually a royalty? He came to himself. He what? He came to himself. And that brings me to a very profound question, which is, who am I? Ask yourself this question. Who am I? Ask yourself, like, genuinely, have you ever pondered about it to ask yourself, who am I? Who are you? Who are you? What is your essence? What is your purpose? You know, there is something that we all have an image of who we are and what we would like to become. Am I right? Let's interact. We all have an image of who we would like to become. When we are young, you see us, oh, what would we like to become? Like, I'd like to become a medical doctor. I'd like to become a lawyer. I'd like to become a, an engineer. And what of you? It goes on and on and on. We have an idea of who we would like to become. We have that image who we would like to become. And this particular image of ourselves is often shaped by our parents. Oh, especially from where we are from. Probably a lot of us would have been stand-up comedians. But because where on earth would you tell your parent that you want to become a stand-up comedian now? Look at you like, are you serious? So some of us actually ended up in the profession or the field we are in because of our parents. What they've poured in our uh, as in the expectations they have for us. Also, this particular image of ourselves is often shaped by our society. There are some things you can't say you want to become. Your society will like look at you like, are you normal? Are you okay? No. Your mates are there doing medicine. Your mates are there doing da 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 da. You want to say you want to go and become um, a poet? Excuse you? No. It's shaped by the society we grew up in. It's shaped by our culture. It's shaped by the people around us, the uncles, the aunties, the brothers, the sisters we have next to us. Some of this perceived image of ourselves when we are growing up was they were shaped by all those elements around us. And as we grow older, this strong sense to reveal our desires is further shaped by another entity, which are like friends. Don't forget when we were younger, it was shaped by our culture, society, our parents. And now as we grow older, now it's been shaped by friends, by teachers. Oh, I can see you. He's a very, he, he likes to work with his hand. I think he will be a good uh, craftsman. Oh, he likes to talk. I think he will be a good pastor. Oh, no. Ah, this one. He likes to, you know. They, the teachers will not start shaping those ideas of who we want to be by their perception of what we are doing then. And it doesn't stop there. Some of us, after we now moved on, we moved on to the level of working. We find ourselves in place of work. You now see your boss telling you, I think you'll be a good project manager. Why don't you go and take that course? I think you'll, do a, you'll be a good business analyst. Why don't you go and do that? Oh, I think you'll be a fantastic uh, medical doctor. Or I think you'll be a good, um, 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 what is it called? Uh, scrum, anything, you know, all those things that our boss at place of work put in our heads to let us keep discovering ourselves. But in all this all, there's something we are looking for. Who am I? Do you know the reason why you land in Canada? For those that, are, that migrated here, you are looking for that sense of identity. Do you know why you married that sister, that brother? You are looking for that sense of identity. Like, who am I in terms of marriage? You are looking for that sense of identity. And the, real, the, 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 the profound thing about this is that human beings, we spend a great deal of time, energy and resources to answer that life most important question, who am I? Most of the things we do today 
is centered on finding that purpose. It is centered on finding that identity. That question of who am I? Who am I? That you are in a sexual sector today, that you are in a field today, it is still under that finding your feet to discover who you are. And there is nothing more troubling and unsettling than identity crisis. Hallelujah. I'll take that again. I'll say there is nothing more troubling and unsettling than identity crisis. When you don't know who you are, you will live the life of others. Hallelujah. When you don't know who you are, you will live the life of others. I know a lot of us, uh, I don't know if you've read this book, the Jungle Book. If anybody has read it, you wouldn't understand it. It's by Rudyard Kipling. Kipling. And that, that was the book. They actually, Disney actually acted it into like a Disney movie. The Jungle Book. Yeah, it's also available. It's a Disney movie. It's a story around, it's a true life story. It was inspired by a true life story, actually, of a, of a, of a man. A feral child in India back in um, 1867, he was, he was lost in the woods. I mean, there were a group of hunters. They don't even know how it came, it came about. A group of hunters were going around and they saw this child, maybe about two, three-ish around that time, crawling on all fours like an animal. But they know he's a child. They know he's a human being. But this child was crawling on all fours and it was in the pack of wolves in India. It was in, it, the boy was in the pack of wolves. And the wolves, wolves were not at, at, attacking the child. They were just playing around it. And they were all like a pack. So the, the hunters were curious. Like, how come a child is acting, is like in the pack of, you're not a wolf. You're a human being. You should be standing upright. You should be walking on, on your two legs, your hind legs, not on your fours. You know? So the hunters actually went after these wolves and killed the wolves to rescue the child. So when they rescued the child, they noticed that everything this child was doing was like that of a wolf. It wouldn't, he, they had to retrain him on how to walk on two legs. He wouldn't eat meat. He wouldn't eat anything aside meat. He sniffs like a wolf. He howls like a wolf. He doesn't talk. He doesn't talk. And this affected him all through his years till he died in 1895. About 32 years there about, he never lived a normal life. Because till his death, he kept on seeing himself as a wolf. Hallelujah. And that is the way identity crisis can make some of us live an unfulfilled life. Ask yourself again, who am I? When you know who you are, you will know how to behave. Where you know who you are, you know how to respond. Not all things will trigger you anymore. Not all people will get you angry anymore. Not everything you respond to. Where you know who you are, you will have a sense of direction. Not everything will follow. You won't be, uh, but uh, giant, uh, you know, there's some people they call them anywhere beliefs. <laughs> I hope Pastor wants to kill me for this. You know, they call them. Uh, what? How can I best translate that? Anything, everything, anything goes. They go to the north. Oh, let's go south. Let's go east. They have no sense of direction because they don't have a sense of purpose because they don't know who they are. They see themselves in Sister Hey. The next thing they see themselves in Brother B. If it's now um, um, the Daddy He tomorrow, that's just how they live their life, bouncing off of people. They don't have a true sense of self worth. They don't have a true sense of self-direction. They don't know where they are going. It's just about the bandwagon. It's about what the next person is doing. Hallelujah. So, when you know who you are, it will give you a sense of purpose. It will give you a sense of who you truly are. What you are here to do. What you need to achieve. But time. And you will be on time with it. Because you know that for everything, there is a set time for it. If by 20 you're supposed to be doing this and you're not doing it, you know you have to put yourself on your toes. If by 30 you're supposed to be doing something, you're not doing it, you know that, no, I have to put myself, I have to do better than I am doing. When you understand your true identity, it gives you a sense of believing, a, a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, and a sense of living, and a sense of direction. Hallelujah. But the most painful part in this finding who we are is that 
we often leave the most important thing. Who can unravel this ministry, uh, this mystery, sorry, or who can help give the best and perfect answer to who we are out of it? Hallelujah. I'll take that again. I said, most of the time, we often leave the most important being, because he's a being, who can unravel the mystery or help give the best and perfect answer to the question, who am I? Don't forget when we are growing up, we focus on our mothers, our fathers, our parents, our siblings, our society, our culture, and even at times our pastor, when we grow, our boss, our friends. But we often leave the important, the most important being out of it. And there is a particular intent. I always tell people one thing. We all, we should all agree to this. There is a particular intent and purpose that a creator had in mind. Am I, am, am I correct? When you create something, you had, a, you had a purpose for it. Am I correct? When you are designing something, you know, like our, our mothers that are cooking. The moment you see them buying meat, a goosey, okay, a goosey, melon, um, what's it called? Maybe pumpkin leaf, ugu, ugu leaf, uh, what else? Okporoko, stockfish, all those things. They knew, they know what they wanted to cook. Am I correct? I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. A lady won't buy a goosey, pumpkin leaves. Um, stockfish and what have you, and we say the int our intention was to cook okra. I mean, no, we, all probably our intention was to cook jollof rice. Maybe, maybe, maybe my own cooking skills is local. Maybe people that are at the international level, maybe at some point, when you boil a goosey, you can turn to jollof rice. Hallelujah. What am I saying in the sense is that there is a particular intent and purpose or intention that a creator had in mind when they're creating an entity. And the creator is the only one who can best reveal the intent and purpose. You, it is only the creator that can best reveal. Like, now, like I just give an example of um, that ingredient, soup ingredient. If my wife would come home and bring all these stuff, I could assume wrongly, oh, Maybe, I, maybe she brought home beans and, uh, and uh, whatever. And I said, oh, maybe you want to cook beans? And she said, no, I don't, I'm not cooking beans. I want to make bean soup. But if I didn't ask her, I'll go ahead and say, I'll assume. Oh, yeah, she wants to make beans. I'll start making beans porridge. But I've deviated from the intention of the creator. From what she had in mind when she was buying those things. So that is why as believers... We need to go back to the creator to understand who we are. That is the only being that can give us the answer that we are looking for. That is the only being that can show us our true identity. The book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew thee. Before we were formed, he had a purpose. He had a plan. He knew you. He knew what you would become. He knew the day you were born. He knew the gender you would be. That is why it's, it's, it's a bit appalling and maybe a little bit worrisome about some things that is going on in the world. Hallelujah. Because before you were formed, he knew you. He knew you would be a woman. He knew you would be a man. He knew you would be the day you, the time you, he knew everything. But because maybe because of identity crisis, started questioning that. Hallelujah. Before we were formed, he knew. And another thing I want us to understand is that. When God created us, he had a purpose. Hallelujah. When he created us, he had a purpose in mind. And to understand your true identity, I want us to read Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Quickly. I know my, my time is first spent. I'll try and rush through so that we can end on time. It's a topic I want to cover. Genesis 1 27. 
If you're asking yourself, what is my true identity? Here is it. So God created man in what? In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Meaning what? You are God ranking. You are God on earth. You carry the presence of God. That is your true identity. That is who you are. You carry the presence. You are made in the likeness of God. You are not made like a wood. You are not made like an animal. No. You are not made like... It is, let me tell you something true. Something very, very profound. The names we are bearing, it's until because after we killed us when we gave, we have the name. Where we are coming from heaven, we are if you want to call it, we are God's son, God daughter. Simple. But just for identification purpose, they will call okay, this one Ife, that one is this one, that. But really, who are we? We are just simple God's sons and daughters. Shikina. That is our truest identity. And if you now want to understand and to understand this deeper, let's go to Genesis 2 verse 7 as well. To understand it deeper. He, after having created us 2.27. 2.27. Then we will really understand who we are. And they, Genesis 2.27. Oh, sorry, 2, 7, sorry, my, sorry. Genesis 2, verse 7, sorry. 2, verse 7. Thank you, thank you. And the Lord God formed a man in the dust of ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And the man became a living. Meaning what? You carry God's presence. You carry God's nature. You carry God's breath in you. That is just to answer your truest identity. You are God's child. You carry God's DNA. The 26 chromosomes that make up God is in you. DNA that makes up God is in you. So what? You are God on earth. Hallelujah. And to now understand the importance or why we are created. You can go back to Genesis, verse, chapter, Genesis 1 verse 28. All the way to the end to 31. I will just glance to Genesis 1 28. Then God blessed them. Now why are we created? And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish and the sea. Over the best of the air and over every living thing that moves on earth. Next verse please. And God said, I have given you the, everything over, I have given you every herb that yields, seeds which is on the face of all earth and every tree who, whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be food. The next one, and to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the earth, to everything that creeps on earth, in which there is life, I have given every green up for food, and it was so. And God said, everything I made was perfect, was good. So if you go back to that 28 to 30, you will see, it was just speaking about one thing, dominion. Someone said dominion. You are created to, domi to, to dominate. Not to be subdued. Hallelujah. I have to move very fast because our time is fast spent. Um, so, our true identity is about fulfilling God's purpose on earth. Amen. Our true identity is about fulfilling God's purpose on earth. But the painful question is, why are some of us struggling to accept our true identity? And we kept living a mediocre life. The reason is because we struggle to believe. We struggle to believe our truest identity, who God said we are, says we are. You know, pastor said something on Sunday. It's very profound. He said, one of the chief goals of redemption is for God to express himself through mankind. That is one of the purpose. That is one of your reasons. Why you are. God wants to express himself through you. And you know God, we always say something, how great is our God? God is a great God. Ask yourself, am I great? Is your life exuding greatness? Or is exuding mediocrity? But you are created to reveal God's, God's uh, to, uh, to, to reveal God on earth, to express God on earth. 
but your life is not expressing the intent and the, the character of God on earth, of, of God. That is a question that begs for an answer. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him to, me, to him, he gave the right to become who? Children of God. You need to first do what to receive him. And how can you receive? By believing in your heart. By believing in your heart. Romans 10, 10 says, For with our heart we believe unto righteousness, and with our mouth we confess unto salvation. You need to believe in your heart. Without believing in your heart, that John 1, chapter 12 is not yours. Sorry to say, it's not me. Can you project it, please? John 1, 12. Pastor read it for us last week, Sunday. But as many as received him. How can you receive him? By believing him. So if you don't receive him, you can't be called children of God. No. So if you are still struggling to believe God, if you are still struggling to believe his promises for your life, then you have not received him. You are trying to use your head knowledge to ratify, to, to, to make sense of some of the things he has told you or he has told us. Hallelujah. So the true identity God wants us to live on earth is about fulfilling his purpose on earth. It's about discovering ourselves in Christ. And I said something that we must come to a personal revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus and the authority we have. You can't be a child of God and you don't know the authority you carry. Your father is a sovereign God. He is the almighty. He is the only true God. He has no equal. So you, as a son, you need to understand the authority you carry. Amen. I was watching online. I know people that have been on social media would have seen this. The crown prince of Benin. I don't know his name now. The crown prince of Benin. <clears throat> there is the current about Benin still there. But the crown prince, when people go and visit him, you see people kneeling down, prostrating. People, oh, he's not the king yet. He's just the crown prince. And yet, people are according him the respect, the, 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 the obeisance they give to his father. That, now he starts to be an earthly king. Now imagine the children of a king of kings. Now imagine the children of the Lord of Lords, the children of the almighty God, the sovereign God, the El Shaddai. How much more you? You need, to, you need to understand the authority you wield. Amen. We must understand our true identity in Jesus Christ. We must what? Understand our true identity. We must come to that personal revelation of our truest identity and understand the authority we have as sons and daughters of God. Amen. Let me just try and bring this to a close by just highlighting three areas where we must understand our true identity. I have some other things listed here, but I'll just touch on three areas quickly so that we can exit to prayer and we can leave. The number one thing, you must understand your true identity on righteous living. Amen. You must what? Understand your true identity on righteous living. 1 John chapter 2 verse 29. It says, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is what? Born of him. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Can you give me NIV please? Just want to, okay we don't have, sorry. Okay, uh, because of time, I, I, I wouldn't go there. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay, let me just, let's continue. But this is, I was also to have a deep understanding of it. If you know that he is righteous, you will know that everyone who practice righteousness is born of him. So, when you practice righteousness... You are confirming your true identity in Christ. So if you say you are a son and daughter of God, 
then you must bear true resemblance of God. You must be meek. You must be gentle to speak. You must be loving. You must exhibit everything that Jesus Christ exhibited on earth. That is what the Bible says. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And if you are claiming that you are sons and daughters of God, you are claiming that you are born of him, then you must showcase righteousness. So one of the ways you must showcase your truest identity is by righteous living. You shouldn't be the type that they will be catching doing things that shouldn't be of a Christian or shouldn't be of a child of God. No! That you are not sons and daughters yet. You have not come to that realization of who you are in Christ Jesus. You are still living in delusion or denial or in, you are still living in mirage. Or just thinking, wishing. You know, there's a difference between knowing and wishing. You could wish that you are a child of God. Or you, you will know. If you know, then this is one of the things that you will reflect. You will practice a righteous living. You will practice righteousness. People will see you and say, yes, this is a child of God. Not, in, not, not, not just until you say it. Let your, let, let, let your character speak it. Let your what? Let your character speak it. Let your nature peace, uh, speak it. The Bible says, people will see your works and they will glorify your father in heaven. When they see your true works, that's when they'll say, oh, truly, you have a father in heaven. But some people, when they see their works, they only glorify Satan, who is your father. Oh, yes, I don't, I'm not doubting it. Oh, yeah, okay. But when they see your good works, that's when they say, ah, uh ah, -uh, truly. You know, when, as a child, when you go out, when we are growing up, when we do something good, they reference our parents. Ah, I'll speak, I'll say this in Yoruba and I'll translate it in English. A good child, a well-behaved child, you were well-trained. They will send a message back home to your parents because you are exhibiting true character. And once, when they know them, when they know your parents, they will say, ah, truly you are the true sons of, son of your parents or you are the true son, daughter of your parents because you are exhibiting the character and the characteristics they know of your parents. But if you behave otherwise, they will ask you. And you know where we are, where we are from? We are very audacious. We ask some profound questions. Are you sure you are the son of so, 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 and so, so? Or are you sure you are the daughter of so, so, and so, so? They are passing you like, this behavior you are behaving, it doesn't conform with that person we know. Are you sure you are the child of A and B? And that is the way people are asking some of us today. Are you sure you are a child of God? Are you sure you, be, you bear through the resemblance of God? Or you are just playing lip service? Or you are just doing it for, as a camouflage? Or you are true to your, to your intention as a son and as a daughter of God? Hallelujah. So that we must be true to our identity in righteous living. Amen. Let me pick two more before we exit. Second one I will go is, we must understand our true identity in Christ Jesus in respect to our health, safety, and all and peace. Hallelujah. You have a father that nothing can come near him. He conquered death. By his stripes you are healed. And here you are. One, one witch is tormenting you. Have you forgotten that you bear this mark of Jesus Christ? Let no man trouble you. Have you forgotten what it says that nothing shall come near you? Nothing shall come near you. A thousand shall fall by your right, ten thousand by your left. Hallelujah. You need to come to that true identity of who you are in Christ Jesus in terms of your health, your safety, and your all and peace. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, it will keep us in perfect, it will keep us in perfect peace. Those who are steadfast on him. He will keep what? In perfect peace. Those who, those who their minds stayed on him. Those who are their, the sons and daughters of God. He will keep you in perfect peace. The Bible says again, he will fight your battle and you will what? Hold your peace. Why are you troubled about that person troubling you? Why didn't you just say, Father, this person is troubling your son. Handle it. 
You know, where you know who you are, where you know your true identity in terms of your relationship with the Almighty God, then you just take everything to your Father. You know, we always sing this song, I have a Father, Almighty Father. Are we really, are we just singing it for lip service or we understand that we really have a Father, an Almighty Father? He is the King of Kings. You know, you know the effrontery our baby is always have. He, they fight in school or someone is bullying them. I will tell my mommy for you. I will tell my, and when they see you, they come with all boldness. Nothing on earth. My mommy will. Shh. Mommy, come. This is this is They know that you will handle it. If our earthly children could do that unto us, how much more God? So you need to understand that true identity in terms of your relationship with God, in terms of your peace, in terms of your safety, in terms of your health. Hallelujah. And the last one, I don't want to draw too much on that. The last one I'll give us today before I call it a day is sorry, I just want to pick a uh, okay, okay, let me, let, me, let me pick this. We must understand our true identity in Christ Jesus in respect to dominion and prosperity. Hallelujah. We must what? Understand our true identity in Christ Jesus in respect to dominion and authority and prosperity. And that ties us back to that Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. 28 to 30 basically. When he was telling us to have dominion. That is... You need to come to that realization, that true identity, that authority, that, 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 that boldness you have. And I love what the Bible says in Hebrews 4, 16, that come boldly. Come what? Boldly. It didn't say timidly because it knows that you are. My sisters, my brothers, if you want to enter your daddy's house, will you go with? It's not possible. Or you want to go to your daddy's bedroom. Daddy, I'm coming. Wah, you don't enter. That is what the Bible is letting us know here. Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Because of who we are, children of God. We must have that boldness, that dominion, that authority that was explained in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. That we need to subdue the earth. We need to dominate. Nothing must dominate us. So why are you being dominated? Why are you being trampled upon at your workplace? Why are things not working out for you? Maybe you need to understand your truest identity. And lastly, about the prosperity part. You need to understand that you are created to prosper. That is one of the things God called your net to do. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 that and you shall remember that it is the Lord your God that giveth the power to make wealth. The Lord your God. It is only the ones that can call God their Lord that has that power. And because you can call him God, because you can call him your father, because he's your, you, see, you are his son and you are his daughter, you have that power by, by, by proxy. So meaning what? You carry wealth in your hand. Amen. You carry what? You carry wealth in your hand. Let no man trouble me for I bear what? The mark of Christ. Who is troubling you? Who is that poverty? Who is that tribulation troubling you? You bear the mark of Christ. You have his DNA in you. That is your truest identity. Amen? We always sing, uh, uh, my father, uh, I, have a fa I have a father who, uh, that holds the heaven and earth. And yet, you are not taking ownership of that pro uh, property of your father. We always say that my father owns everything and yet we are living in penury. Maybe you need to understand your choice identity. Let's rest upon our feet. You are living in lack. You are living in want. You are living from pound to pound, dollar to dollar. Paycheck makes a payday. You keep on calculating, over calculating, and under calculating. You've forgotten what the Bible says. That my Lord shall supply all my needs. I call it to his riches and glory. My what? My God. 
And because you are his child, you have that dominion too. You have that power. You have that assurance that he will supply all your needs. Not some. All your needs. Now I'm young. Before I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous beg for bread. I've not seen the righteous lack, not their children see beg for bread. Hallelujah. So begin to pray now, God. Reveal to me who I am in you, O oh Lord. Enough of living in this denial, in this delusion, in this obscurity. I want to come into my true realization of who I am in you. Help me, O oh Lord. Enough of living like a slave in my father's house. Enough of living like a Papa, we are supposed to live like a king. Enough of living the life of pain and, 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 and trouble. When I'm supposed to be stand, staying on top of situations. Lord, help me tonight. Help me to come to my true realization of who I am in you. Help me to come to the true sense of your, my self-worth in you. I come to you today. I don't want to live in live a, 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 a crisis life, a crisis filled life, I, and, a, and a crisis a life with, filled with identity crisis. I don't want to live that life anymore. Help me, Holy Lord, to understand, to come to the realization of who I am in You. Help me, Jesus, today. Help me, Jesus, today. Hallelujah. Let's take that song that Pastor wants to, took on Sunday. And we'll take it again, maybe one or two, three times, then we'll pray and we'll, we'll wrap it up. This life that I am is the life of Christ in me. This life that I am is the life of God. This life that I am is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life of Christ. Sing it again, the life you have. This life you need to understand the life you have. It's the life of Christ in you. It is not your own life. It's the life of God in you. It is the life of God that I have. life that will make you free from the shackles and the bondage of the, of the demon because that is the life that will make you dominate because that is the life that will take you above and not beneath because that is the life that will make you trample upon serpents and scorpions because that is the life that will give you your true worth in Christ that is the life you have in you this song is just reminding you of the life you have in you. It's the life of God in you. He breathes inside of you. The breath of life. You don't carry your own breath. He breathes in you. It's the life of God. One more time. This life is the life of God in me. This life. This life that I have. to you today you are the only one that can show us our true identity you are the only one that can reveal to us the purpose the mandate for our lives the reason why we were made you are the only one that's why we come back to you because we know that we have the life of you inside us we carry your presence Lord help us today help us today Lord to discover our true self 
in you. Help us today, Lord. So that we can stop living the life of mediocrity. We can stop living the life of a, a sinful life. We can stop living the life of penury. Help us, Jesus. And we can cast all our cares upon you for you care upon you care for us. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you and we bless you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Uh, apologies, we speed a little bit over. Apologies. Um, quickly, we have a few announcements and uh, we will call, we'll be out of here. Tomorrow, morning blessing continues. Don't miss it. 6 a.m. Eastern time. God is doing miracles. God is doing wonders. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the writer for the month. Here's, here's portion. Come and take your sons and daughters portion. So come, come tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Eastern time. Don't miss it. Invite someone. Only exclusively online, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, if you have your, um, on Sunday, as Pastor has mentioned on Sunday, last Sunday, it will be between two series, a, a two-packed Sunday, back-to-back, -back, a series on your identity. Don't board it on the one I just I, that God delivered today. It is it's going to come in a new dimension. Why don't you come early? Don't watch from home. Come in person. Don't sit at home. You 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 need to hear it until you fulfill that full that that truest identity of yours. So even if it's going to take three Sundays, yes, it's going to take three sermons, yes. Come on Sunday, ten thirty a.m. Um, Sunday school, ten fifty-five a.m. Worship service will start. Don't miss it. Come in person, don't watch online. God bless you in Jesus' name. And if you have your offering, your gift, your seat, your tithe, you can, you can drop it. The platform to grieve, finance at gracelifetop.ca or you can charge your card. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Share us on our feet as we bring the card service to a close. The grace of fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go and go and live that true identity of Christ that God has destined for you. You are blessed.